Thank you for calling the Employment Development Department Unemployment Insurance Customer Service Center. Pandemic unemployment assistance benefits are available to those unemployed as a direct result of COVID-19. Thank you for calling the Employment Development Department Unemployment Insurance Customer Service Center. It typically takes at least three weeks to process and issue a payment. If you have a claim or need to file a claim, if you suspect fraudulent activity involving unemployment insurance, handle California's unemployment insurance applications. We're here to help, and we've significantly ramped up our ability to handle California's unemployment insurance applications. We're here to help. We know that COVID-19 is spreading rapidly. We are directing that all bars, nightclubs, wineries, brew pubs, and the like be closed in the state of California. To just lose it all and see him, like to see this little boy suffer. Some 4.6 million of you have filed for unemployment claims uh, just since March 12th. Uh, we are at a time that's simply unprecedented. Everybody who is now out of work is eligible for unemployment insurance. They failed in their fundamental duty at a time when they were needed the most. EDD has placed many major barriers in front of everyday people trying to access their benefits. I mean, there are so many people's lives that have been ruined and they're lying about it. And it's so frustrating. For your kids to go to sleep at night and not be able to eat anything, it hurts. Real people are being harmed. Real people who are hanging on by their fingernails. I understand that, you know, I'm just another claim. I'm just another number, but to me, this is my life. With COVID spreading like mad, people here in California turned to the state for help. The Employment Development Department is the unemployment office here. But when people called, they didn't get answers. When they went online, they often didn't get answers. So they ended up turning to me. I'm Michael Finney. I'm part of the largest consumer unit on television in this country. So people knew they could come to us and get help. Uh, but the EDD didn't want us to help those people. As a matter of fact, they actually told us, quit bothering them. Uh, we wouldn't do that. We continue to bother them to this day. He's like magic. I'm gonna find you, dude. Talon! Come out, come out wherever you are. I got you. It did. It did change our life in a very dramatic way. I was a life insurance agent, so I was an independent contractor, and then I was also serving on the weekends at Applebee's. We just, uh, we were renting a house in a really nice area, you know, it was the best that we had ever been doing. As soon as um, the shelter in place thing happened, both of those jobs laid me off. I just started losing everything one by one. When I had originally filed for unemployment, they didn't know what was going on with my case. It's something to do with their system. And so I'm gonna have to wait and that they were gonna fix it and have a specialist call me. The specialist never called me. Nobody had answers for me. I would barely even be able to get through half the time. Select from these claim options. I started to call them. I called and I called and I could never get through, never get through. I couldn't afford rent. I couldn't afford anything. I made a life for myself and now it's gone. It was like, okay, am I gonna spend the last of this money to give to my landlord when I'm still already two months behind or pack up all my stuff and just try to find a small car or something 
and just try to survive that way. And that's what I had to do. This is, <laughs> this is Callan, my four-year-old son, being in the car. It's changed him a lot. I mean, he throws a lot of temper tantrums and stuff. He's never been like that before. This right here is like become his play room spot. It's got all of his toys. So I just make a bed out of all the blankets. Nothing's normal about what's going on. He went from having his own room and going to daycare every day and seeing his friends and now to just me in a car or camping as I call it. I called them for the millionth time and I asked them what had happened. For some reason, my claim got pushed to like the very back of the line or something and then eventually got deleted. It's something to do with their system. And so I'm gonna have to wait for a specialist to call me. And I said, every time you guys say that, nobody ever calls me. And the number that you guys give me, nobody ever answers. It's just so heartbreaking for us to hear that we don't want to see people frustrated trying to get through the call center. They just keep telling me that I need to keep waiting. And I'm like, how much longer am I keep waiting until I can't even feed my own child? How can you sit there and tell me there's nothing you can do? Why are you guys even, why is there a number to even call them? One plus one is two. They acted like I was, like I didn't matter, yeah. you know? Like they, you have to have money to survive. They took my ability to be able to survive because that's what they're there for, right? For when tragedies happen or things happen and they weren't there when I needed them. The unemployed weren't looking for a handout or welfare or anything like that. They just wanted their insurance benefits, their unemployment insurance benefits. But the federal government decided that workers who were not traditional employees, they were contractors, that they would get the same money too. Well, that really complicated things. It put EDD in the middle. And that brings us back to Shelby. You see, she had two jobs. One, she was a traditional employee. The other, she was a contract worker. And that left EDD not knowing what to do about her. And Shelby, without any money. I'll go to campsites here and there. The campsites, they get scary because there's not a lot of people camping during the week and stuff, you know, like just the other night, somebody tried to open our doors. A lady told me, what, you want to go somewhere? No, I want to go right in the pool for it clothes. As soon as he saw a pool, right when we pulled up, he saw the pool and he, he's been wanting to go in it ever since. <laughs> yeah. I don't, we don't have a membership, Amy. Do you no, want to, if you're... No, no, I want to go in the pool because... It will close soon. Okay, okay. We're gonna go to a park. Let's go. Not you don't wanna park. go play with me? Not we'll go to I a new park. Pool right now. Okay, okay. We're gonna go to the other one. No, Let's go. Like it. it breaks my heart. I feel like a failure all the time. And all I wanna do is make a life for my little boy, you know? Just like he's all I care about, he's all I have. And I can't even do that. I try to tell EDD too, like, I understand, like, you know, I'm just another claim. I'm just another number. But to me, this is my life. Like, I feel like some days I'm just going to lose it. Like, I can't take it anymore, you know? I just, like, is this really what I was meant to do? Like, is this why I was put here? To just go through all this pain all the time? There was such an outpouring. People wanted to give her money. They wanted to get her a car. They wanted to get her a house. We had several people call up and say, she can move into my spare bedroom. The outpouring was stunning. And everybody was asking for, for GoFundMe, GoFundMe, but nobody had started one. 
And after an hour of searching, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. It just broke my heart um, to see her and her son in their car at night. I put myself in her situation and it was just one of those things that you just, you have to do what you have to do to help another mom. It brought back a lot of memories when I was a single mom. I became a single mom when my daughter was two. When I started it, I didn't think it was gonna make a difference. If it makes a difference and she gets into a home, that's great. You just want babies to be safe. If these people wouldn't have done what they did for us, I don't even know where we would be. I don't want to imagine it. It was something we stumbled on. One of my investigators was listening to jail phone calls on a case, and he heard the inmate talking about this scam that was going on in the jail, about, hey, here's how you can get this easy money. We've charged 21 people with ripping off the California EDD. It's infuriating. It's incredibly frustrating. What I've understood is that the EDD system is not guarding well against this type of fraud, while at the same time making it extremely difficult for everyday honest people who are just trying to get their benefits. Scammers were using random names and random addresses, just slamming them together and then filing for benefits. And the EDD was just sending out the money. Billions of dollars worth. Now, they had a lot of honest people saying, look, these checks aren't mine. How do I send them back? But EDD wasn't listening. Either old from EDD. So all together, we've received over 150 pieces of mail. I wonder what the mailman thought. <laughs> I'm going to mail them all back to the fraud department this coming weekend. Everyone else knew that this was happening. Why did it take so long for them to figure it out? It was like they didn't care. So when it appeared to me they didn't care, I didn't care. So here's the EDD completely under attack. Scammers coming at them from every angle. And they had two investigators, two. We've had a, a, a very, very unusual situation where you've got organized crime rings, both at the domestic and international level, sitting on a treasure trove of stolen personal identifying information off the dark web, stemming from data breaches in, in the corporate world. And unfortunately, these very unscrupulous scammers were kind of waiting to pounce on unemployment insurance, insurance systems across the country in the way in which we've never seen before. And the result has been open floodgates for fraud and increasing difficulty and unpaid claims to legitimate Californians needing their money desperately. It's a hurtful thing for your kids to go to bed at night and not be able to eat anything. It hurts. I went to go and get groceries for myself and the kids, and we were in Walmart and my transaction declined. And it said that my account was closed. The EDD eventually figured out they had to do something about all this fraud. So they froze 350,000 accounts. Now the problem with that was a lot of legitimate accounts were frozen too. And now they're deciding that they're going to lock everybody out. You are guilty until you prove yourself innocent. And at the same time, desperate people are at the end of their bank accounts and are really at the end, uh, at their wit's end. And they said, oh, it'll take three or four days and you should be able to use your card. It still didn't work. So I called them back. They said that it takes anywhere from 45 days to 90 days. The EDD had to do something. So what they said was, you need to prove who you are. They made that very difficult. There was hoop after hoop after hoop to jump through. And many claimants managed to do that and still didn't see their money. In 2020, in California, the high-tech capital of the world, in order to get your ID checked, you have to go somewhere, make a copy, fold up the paper, put it in an envelope, lick a stamp and throw it in the mail. I mean, that just seems outrageous to me. Well, and it's certainly not as efficient as it should be. I've probably called maybe about 3,200 times. 
and they all told me the same thing. It seems like they're reading from a script. They can only give you general information. There's nothing pertaining to my account. They cannot transfer me to someone who can identify me. We have people who call our office in tears because they don't know how they're going to pay rent or how they're gonna go shopping to put food on the table for their kids. And they're in tears. Why, why are we doing this to people? I had a yard sale. I had to sell some clothing and stuff just to try to get some food and stuff. And it's like, how do you tell a kid, no, you can't have anything to eat? I'm not able to provide for them as I should right now. And it's sad to say as a parent, I miss them every day. That's sad. You don't know how many days and nights I've cried. I have been running from my landlady. I've been locking myself in the house, keeping my blinds closed all this week because she told me I have to leave her property. I've been telling her that I'm waiting on money. I'm waiting on money. I've given her as much as I could. Every time I hear noise outside, I'd be quiet. I turn the TVs down, thinking that it's her coming to the door, which it has been. It's sad because you don't know what utility is going to be turned off. Who's going to come out and throw you on your head? That's frightening. That's that's horrible. How do you expect for us to live? There was an effort to limit fraud, leaving people who are on the brink of homelessness and hunger cut off from their benefits without any warning. Nothing has affected my constituents more than the mess up at EDD. Pure and simple, this is a monumental fail. There's, there's many people out there in California who are really struggling uh, that need help. Millions of Americans, maybe you, were relieved when Congress expanded unemployment benefits into the new year. However, here in California, thousands of workers found out that they aren't getting benefits at all. That's just, it's too much. That will push somebody over the edge. It just felt like, you know, they're just trying to take something from me, like not giving my money, basically. And I just started accepting the fact like they're just not gonna give me my money. You know, as so I'm sitting there sick and I'm still trying to like, you know, pay things. You know, we're already struggling. People are drowning. We're drowning. Oh yeah, 2020 is over. 21, 21 is going to be so much better. And we're all like, yes. And then that happens. And it's like, really, this is the way we start off the year. Well, Darian got it first. His ears were hurting. His eyes were hurting. His face was hurting. So we got him tested the next morning and then it came back with COVID. And then my son texted me, it was like um, midnight. And he said, mom, what is this? It was a message, your EDD benefits have been suspended due to possible fraud. There was no warning. There was no warning at all. I think they just did it just so they wouldn't have to pay people as much. That's the only reason I could think of to just cut off thousands of people for no reason without giving a notice or anything like that. When he showed it to me, I'm just like, this can't be, this can't be possible. Like, this is insane. How could he be suspended for, for suspected fraudulent activity? First of all, there's no notice. It seems like every few weeks, there's a new EDD problem. So EDD suspended 1.4 million claims in between Christmas and New Year's without any heads up to the legislature and our staffs that have been serving as the de facto EDD call center for our constituents for months because the real call center doesn't work. I don't begrudge EDD trying to go after and root out the fraud. We don't want people to be stealing taxpayer dollars, but they're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. What I can tell you is we have a renewed commitment to work with the legislature to let people know clearly in advance when we're making this type of an action. 
As far as I'm concerned, this will never happen again. The net was wider than it should have been, and certainly we will continue, and we promise to continue to work on those filters so that we are only um, identifying those that have the absolute highest level of risk of fraud. And I didn't even know that his was suspended because he, that's I didn't he, even know mine was suspended Until either. a couple days later, he didn't look at his messages and he looked at his message, he got the same message the same night. My son's a college student. We're, we're all living together. We quarantined him to the room, we wiped everything down, but it was just too late. It was like the next day somebody else got sick and the next day somebody else was, it just, we couldn't stop it. No matter what we did, keeping everybody quarantined to their rooms, and um, we all just started dropping like flies. It was just, yeah. We're trying to deal with being sick and trying to get tested and trying to make sure everybody's okay, trying to figure out the food situation and water and who's touched what in the house and, and you know, Lysol and everything. It, it, that's just, it's too much. That will push somebody over the edge. You know, we're already struggling. People are drowning, we're drowning. And then we got to deal with EDD. And I hear these stories, I, I uh... I, I really appreciate the uh, the difficulty that people are going through. I get I get calls and letters all the time. But I was really really sick, and I'm trying to help them. And the, you know they're all quarantined. We're trying to figure out who to call. Having to deal with them when you're sick, you kind of feel immobilized. Like I can't even really step foot outside my door. The stress and the pain that people are going through is not lost on me. Instead, they just ran out and froze everyone's account and, 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 and are asking for the information after the fact. It's like, ready, shoot, aim. You're basically at their mercy, waiting for the next message, the next step of what you can do next to try to prove who you are. We, we have no control over any of this. And on top of that, we're getting sick. When legislative offices tried to interact with EDD, and we were told that we could only elevate one case a week among our constituents, asking us to decide who gets to put food on the table, who's gonna pay their rent, who's not gonna deplete their life savings, putting us in an impossible situation. And that's when I saw it happened to thousands of people. It was just a mass suspension. They suspend you and there's no way to contact anybody. You can send email, you can you can sit on the phone all day with phone calls and never get through. They make it to where you have to jump through hoops if you wanna get your money. So that's what they're doing. I just started thinking about now, like, what am I going to do? You know, what do I have to do? It's just, it's like a bombshell because it's like, okay, what next? What next is going to happen? Do you believe the EDD is doing a good job? I think we're doing a pretty good job, all things considered, in what was considered an avalanche. I definitely was feeling helpless. I was feeling as though I would be homeless. I worked for the Napa Valley Vintners, who is the uh, trade association for the Napa Valley. And we had probably 250 to 500 people a week coming in, and that came to a standstill. Eight of us uh, ultimately were laid off. Losing my job uh, was traumatic, it always is. When I filed my claim, they immediately rejected me and stated that I'd made false statements, that I was not unemployed due to COVID. I was one of the people that was laid off. And that's, their only response to me was, you've made false claims. No, I didn't. What are you talking about? And you're being told, you didn't lose your job due to COVID, you've made false statements, and we're denying you. And I'm sorry, but it's very upsetting. Yes, it was frustrating. And at times, it brings you to tears because you're so frustrated and aggravated with the whole situation. For me, it's probably just a little more hurtful and grating because I truly try to live my life by doing the right thing.
Now there were concerns that the EDD was trying to throw people out of the system, even legitimate claimants. COVID-19 has created a big increase in the number of calls we receive. But you couldn't ask anyone because you couldn't speak to a single person. But we are here to help you as soon as possible. The EDD was virtually non-responsive. For faster service, use UI online. You can uh, send them an email, zero response. The only thing you could do was call. To return to the main menu, press nine. I don't know which option to pick. Well, it was a barrier. It was a black hole. Please make an entry. Our constituents are calling literally hundreds of times. They're not getting through. Because of EDD's failures, our constituents are depleting their life savings, going into extreme debt. And right now, this desperation is being met by a disinterested bureaucracy. Um, they think if they, if they stall you, berate you, beat you up enough, you just give up and go away. Talk about a massive black cloud hanging over you for months and months, spending down every dime in your checking account, your savings account. That's a little terrifying to me. Millions of phone calls were now flooding into the EDD each week. And now the department was really under pressure. Answer those phone calls. Less than 1% were actually getting through now. Thank you for calling the Employment Development Department Unemployment Insurance Customer Service Center. This center is currently closed. People have rightly commented uh, about the call center needing to be opened up. So you spend three to five minutes going through a phone tree and then that uh, number just hangs up on you. People then rightly commented they're having a hard time uh, getting, uh, because of the call volume, uh, getting a human being to answer and have expressed frustration. They're calling EDD and calling EDD and calling EDD Thank you for calling. Please try again later. We are currently receiving more calls than we can answer. Second hang up. And are unable to assist you at this time. I'll call them back. Please try again later. More calls than we can answer. You're dropped into uh, a void. I, I just feel like EDD has failed us across the board and I am I'm baffled as to why. If they get through, oftentimes they're hung up on or they're speaking to someone who can't help them, who tells them they're gonna be put on a callback list and they never get called back. Please stay on the line and the first available representative will assist you. <laughs> All representatives are still busy. Please continue to hold. <laughs> Please continue to hold. Please continue to hold. Normally, what I would be doing right now is getting up and maybe making myself some lunch. Is there anything you need to go do? We are um, in a mass expedited hiring effort where we have hired or at least extended conditional job offers to more than 4,300 people to come on board and help us here at the EDD. And they did have 4,000 employees, but they could not help you. They're calling EDD and calling EDD and calling EDD only to finally get a hold of somebody who can't fix their problem. Imagine that you, you dialed EDD three or 400 or 500 times over the course of a week. You finally get someone on the phone Tech support, uh, are you able to assist me with looking at a uh, previous claim? Why have I been completely disqualified? Why has your system said I made false statements and penalized me? And why have I not been able to re- You have no idea? I'm working for the EDD and they're the ones, you know, they're told, call the EDD and we can help you and we can't, there's nothing we can do for them. They finally got a real human that could supposedly solve their problems. Right after that, that bubble burst because once I verified who they were so that I could give them information, I couldn't help them. I couldn't, I could do lower level things, but I couldn't help them get their money. I couldn't help them get paid. Um, I couldn't direct that. I couldn't even direct them to another person who could help them do that. 
I could leave a note in their account. People got mad. It, it's quite possible some folks, you know, some of these vendor staff that came on board weren't as familiar with a lot of the information, but we continue to address that with extended training. And here I'm on the other end listening to this and there was a few times I cried right along with them. My supervisors, when those, those things were brought up to them, told us to basically get them off the phone. It's very painful to know that here you were hired to give them information and you, your hands are tied. I moved into a spot as I had just gotten a job at the restaurant. It was mostly pub food with a little bit of a Spanish twist. And so we would have a lot of people coming in for lunchtime and it was a really fun job. So I had a new job, I had a new home, and then COVID hit and the restaurant shut down indefinitely. Because all of the sky rises all shut down and so it was a ghost town. Getting let go from there, it was super hard. So I applied for unemployment and sent in everything that I knew, but for some reason it was saying disqualified. So I spent the first two months trying to figure out why it was disqualified. Thank you for calling the Employment Development Department. Just right away it was incredibly hard to get a hold of them. Today I was on hold for two hours. This one gentleman said that um, in order to transfer, the light has to be green, but it was red because there were 1,140 people on hold. Pandemic unemployment assistance benefits are available to... I have definitely felt angry at some points, especially after being put on hold time after time. Uh, I even had one representative just pass me off because she didn't want to deal with my case. We're here to help. No. <laughs> the conversation usually goes, I will say that I've been waiting for a year for my payments. I have not gotten any payments. And they say, well, why not? That's not right. And then they say, I, I don't really know what else to do for you. To repeat these options, press 8. But I'm not any of those. <laughs> they were saying that I need to mail in proof of income, which I had mailed at the beginning but apparently that wasn't the reason for the disqualification. I have shown my driver's license, W-2 with my social security number and a copy of my birth certificate. So I think I mailed that a total of three times and it did not get accepted. Recertify or have an existing claim, press two. So every representative has said, this looks perfect. I don't know why you're not being accepted. So I have to write to them and say, hi, you haven't paid me in a year and this is how that is affecting me. 1099G information, press four. I wrote appeals, a letter of hardship. I didn't hear anything, so I wrote another appeal and nothing, so. To repeat these options, press eight. I would do anything. I would drive down to SoCal and just hold up all my paperwork and just, like, this is me. Just, be like, just please, it's just, the amount of stress and anxiety and loss of sleep over this has been exponential. Like it's just, I am just trying to live day to day. I'm just trying to pay my bills, trying to be independent, functioning member of society like I was. Thanks for calling the Employment Development Department on oh, no. Online Assistance Center. We're currently receiving more calls <laughs> than we can answer. We are unable to assist no. you at this time. Please try again later. And then they hang up. So you just have to do that over and over and over. Renee Hutchins says, um, please ask, how come no one answers the phone? I've been trying for a year. I gave up. Um, wow. What do you say to folks who gave up because they just simply weren't able to get through? 
Right. And I'm so very sorry to hear that. I, again, I really hope if you have some issues getting through, through on the phone, we've really tried very, very hard to make a lot of great, valuable information available online. You can go on UI online and um, write them a message. So I did. I was like, hi, I'm still here. And they, of course, didn't reply to that. So, yeah. <laughs> My whole goal was to go to SF State, and so I was accepted for fall 2021. So I have been on edge. Can I afford my own place there? Can I afford to actually go to SF State? Like, I would like to continue on with my education, but I've been going through my savings. So I was like, okay, so I'm just paying on my savings. My family is having to support me. So the stress kind of added up. I was just like, okay, it's time to move and save money. So I moved in with my mom. I definitely didn't tell a lot of friends I was moving back in with my mom. It felt, it was embarrassing. I mean, I'm 28. I don't, this is not where I pictured I'd be in my life. It took, I think, about a month to get out of a really bad pit. Earlier this year, EDD said, it didn't know how to track how many people had claims approved, denied, or paid. Director Hilliard, our assembly budget chair, asked you how many claims were unpaid. You said, and I quote, a hundred thousand? No, hundreds of thousands, no hundred thousand. Based on Federal Department of Labor statistics, 1.88 million, almost two million unemployment claims were yet to be paid. Director Hilliard, why did you lie to us? Why have you been hiding this information from the public? I would never lie to the public or to the legislative body. As far as the backlog goes, what is the oldest case you have? We do have claims as old as uh, in June, June, July, August. Our EDD actually came out and said, we have cleared our backlog, we have no one else. Oh, <laughs> my jaw dropped. <laughs> um, it felt like a punch to the gut where it's just, I feel forgotten. I'm just... I contacted uh, Phil Tang. When they contacted EDD, EDD said they had no record of my documents. It was a lie. They lied to him. There have been many times where I've been so close to giving up and just being like, they must be corrupt. They must be holding it back. Maybe there's a select thousand or a few thousand of us that will just never get our money. Probably I called over a thousand times spoken to many, many people and nothing. You get all that pending. Interesting. Um, here, my claim balance used to be 11,500, now it's zero dollars. Oh my goodness, I got it. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's crazy! Seriously? Oh my Thank you gosh! So much. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! I'm gonna cry! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much! You have no idea what this has to be! months she now has it in her in her account clearly you made a difference so um thank you thank you so thank much you. <laughs> this is amazing i don't think either of us actually thought this was gonna happen <laughs> but now she can pursue her dreams literally my tears are a combination of frustration and joy and I am elated, I'll be doing cartwheels. It was seven on your side. It was not my appeal document. A smile on my face again, because this relieves so much stress in my life. I was so angry. 
because I'm like, oh, we're sick. We're trying to deal with this. Like, I, you know, it was, it was terrible. It, you shouldn't be put in that position. You have to call like somebody else to talk to them for you. You can't even call them yourself. They make it to where you have to jump through hoops if you want to get your money. One week they didn't pay him at all. And the other two weeks they reduced his money by more than half because he had COVID. And I'm like, wait a minute. Kids came back home and everything was great. Beautiful feeling, overwhelmed with joy, overwhelmed with joy. And bam, done it again. <laughs> Got locked out again. I had to file a new claim. They were upset, they were hurting, acting out. You know, want to go home. That's the hardest thing that we would have to go through as a mother. I miss them. <laughs> Calling them hundreds of times a day. I've literally called them, Renee, from four or five different phones every day. People will come over I'll ask them, let me borrow your phone. They told me to take my hardship information to the local office, and then they would clear it up that day. I took it to them, and I knocked on the door, and they kept coming to the door. No, we closed. We're not open. So I started beating on the door. So they called security on me. So security came to the door and security told me that he was gonna call the police. So I pleaded with him not to do that. And I told him that EDD is the one who sent me here. So I said, sir, they wouldn't send me here for nothing. So he said, you need to contact them and let them know that they sent you to the wrong place. I was mad, I was upset, I was hurt because I could have used that to take my kids to the doctor. You're supposed to be trained professionals but you're sending me on a wild goose chase. I think they were just trying to get me off of the phone. But thank you. Thank you for helping me any way you can. If EDD would have just paid me, none of this would have happened. It destroyed my life. It destroyed my son's life. So little to like the first five years of his life that are so important. I don't know if my little boy is ever gonna be the same again. If we would have stayed in that car for one more day, I don't know how much longer we would have lasted. Just seeing the effects of what it has done to Callan. When me and Callan received all of those donations from everybody, I thought my life was going to be easy. Like, I would snap my fingers and everything would go back to the way that it used to be. When you are put into a situation where you lose everything that you have ever owned, it's like you dig a hole for yourself and now you have to climb back out. And it's really hard to fix that. I don't! <laughs>
he just freaks out. He throws things, he, he hits things, he screams at the top of his lungs. He got kicked out of like four different preschools. I mean, he's had to go to therapy now. He's almost five years old and he completely regressed on potty training. Instead of being able to focus on getting our life back on track, finding a home, like getting our things stable again and making it to where, okay, we're never gonna have to go through this again. It switched to, okay, now I gotta make sure that my kid is gonna be okay. Like, is there something seriously wrong here? Is he gonna be able to be normal now? I'm living in a, a hotel. In a sense, I do consider myself homeless still. I don't have a place that's mine. I live with a bunch of random people that I don't even know who they are. I pay an obscene amount of money for this tiny space. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel like home. But I'm also so grateful and happy for a lot of people. No matter what, it will always be better than what we were going through before. This is better than the car. This is better than not being able to shower and eat, worrying about where I'm gonna get my next meal. We have a roof over our head, we have a shower. We, we have food in our belly every single night, you know. We have a place, no matter what the place is, it's our home. When things calm down a little bit, perhaps the governor and lawmakers would step back and take a look at how they created this problem. The EDD clearly was not set up to deal with the pandemic. You can't expect them to have done that seamlessly. But there were problems. We knew there were problems 20 years ago, but they didn't get fixed because they weren't on the front burner. Well, we now know these problems do need to be fixed. So rather than wait for the next emergency, I would suggest now might be the time to fix it.